Hey guys, and welcome to this week's episode of D3 Live. So today I'm going to be discussing the upcoming Apple TV, also possibly known as the iTV, Apple's latest iteration of the Apple TV, and it's going to be a real competitor against the upcoming Google TV. And I don't know why they have to add TV to every name. But yeah, let me go ahead and just run you guys through some of the rumors. We've heard a lot of stuff about it, and actually could be coming out as soon as next month. So, of course, I'm sure a lot of you guys are familiar with the current Apple TV, but the next one, I'm just going to be calling it the iTV, is going to be probably a huge step up. It's going to be a lot different. So the current Apple TV is pretty much relegated to just being, you know, a device that can, you know, get on iTunes, you can download all your music and movies, etc. But there really is not a whole lot else you can do with it. It's really pretty much locked down to just being able to access stuff through iTunes. And it's not like, you know, where you just open your computer and you just do a lot of, you know, dropping files, etc. Um, now, what we're actually going to probably be seeing in the iTV is it's going to be much, much smaller. So the current Apple TV is somewhat around, around the same size as the Mac Mini. It's, you know, it's a decent size, it's not huge. However, the upcoming iTV is likely going to be very, very small. Probably a little bit bigger than just maybe the iPhone 4. Um, and continuing with this, is actually going to have a lot of the specs from the iPhone 4, including 16 gigabytes of flash storage, as well as the 1 gigahertz Apple A4 processor, and it should be running iOS, some sort of modified version, of course. Now, this is going to be really interesting, as obviously, as I'm sure a lot of you guys have heard about, the Google TV, which will, will be coming out, um, currently, as well as all through next year as they develop it and get more and more stuff out. Um, now, an interesting thing about the Google TV is that it really is integrated well as your TV. And that's something that Google really worked on. They really want you to be able to just continue watching your TV just like you normally would. And then there's just extra features such as web browsing, etc., etc., on top of that. Now, I think that's just a really good idea. And I really think it's something that the iTV should really focus on. Now, the iTV, like I said, is going to be a very, very small device, and I think it's going to be really cool. A lot of people who've seen it have actually you know, described it as like an iPhone without a screen. Um, now, one pretty important part is, like I said earlier, it only is going to have about 16 gigabytes of flash storage. Uh, now, that's way down from the current Apple TV, which has 160 gigabytes. And really, 16 gigabytes is not going to be able to get you a whole lot. I mean, yeah, you can maybe have a couple TV shows and your, a, few, a little bit of music, but what most of you are going to have to rely on is cloud storage. Now, what I really hope with ITV is that I'll actually be able to sync over to your computer. So, you know, let's say you have a laptop or a desktop or whatever, have it on, and it will just connect via the network and actually go ahead and be able to pull stuff off of that. In addition, it would be really cool if Apple actually allowed you to pull your stuff off of, you know, some sort of cloud-based iTunes. So instead of having to download all this stuff, all you need to do is just go click a button on your iTV and then go ahead and just start playing through different iTunes songs that you already have bought and just have it stream straight from the iTunes servers. I think that would be a really cool feature. Um, now, there's no telling whether we'll actually be able to see this. Um, I think that there's been a lot of rumors about you know being some sort of cloud-based iTunes. I think it would be a great idea. However, if we'll see it, I don't know how if it will be more expensive, things like that. So we're just going to have to wait and see about that. Um, so now, let me just go ahead and just really briefly, um, some of the rumors have said that we actually might be seeing it as soon as next month at the Apple iPod event. Um, I'm not so sure about this. It'll either be probably between then and sometime early next year. I wouldn't be surprised if it actually does come out next year. However, I wouldn't be entirely surprised either if we see it next week, uh, or rather next month. Uh, now, so the price is actually probably the biggest thing about the ITV. It actually said, multiple people have said that it should be going around $99, which would be a really fantastic price. Um, personally, I'm not really quite sure how they can actually get it in that cheap. Um, of course, it does have pretty simple parts. Like I said, it should be about the size of an iPhone, so you're not really going to be worrying about a lot of the intricate electronics, etc. So, if they're actually able to get it in for $99, and that really does have a lot of functionality with cloud-based iTunes, etc., then I think the ITV will be a really solid bet. Okay, so for the second segment of D3 Live, I'll be taking live questions. Obviously, every episode of D3 Live is filmed in front of Log TV. We've got quite a few people in here right now, so let's go ahead and take some questions. Okay, will there be more than 16 gigabytes on the ITV as far as different versions? That's a good question. Um, I do not know. A lot of the, pretty much all the rumors have said that there will just be a 16 gigabyte. Um, now, I honestly would not be surprised whatsoever if there actually is a 32 gigabyte option or even larger than that. Is obviously, it's, there's not a whole lot in there, unlike an iPhone where you know there's not really a room for extra chips. However, at launch, it looks like it will just be 16 gigabyte, and you will just have to really back it up with either hooking, connecting it to your iTunes or hopefully a cloud-based iTunes. Um, who is the direct competitor to the ITV, or is it in a league all its own? 
Um, I think they're actually, depending on how Apple markets it, I think it could go a couple different ways. Um, no matter what they do, I think it's going to be a big competitor with the Google TV. I think, you know, the Google TV looks really solid. It's got a lot of really cool features. And as long as Apple really pays attention, gets a little bit away from iTunes, because that was one of the major problems with the original Apple TV, is that it is so connected with iTunes, if you don't have everything set up through there, it's really a pain to use. So if they can really get away from that, actually, you know, get more towards like a TiVo, where, you know, you can actually record stuff, you can actually go ahead and check what times your different favorite shows are on, then I think it'll be a competitor to actually more of the TiVo and a lot of the standard sort of, you know, DVRs that, you know, you get with your cable or your satellite company. Um, so I think that the Apple TV, depending on, or rather the iTV, depending on how Apple decides to make it, what features they decide to give it to it, it just will kind of vary between what it will actually focus on. Will iTV include Netflix? Um, possibly. Um, actually, the, obviously, if it does run iOS, which pretty much everyone seems to say it does, uh, by, the, of course, a very modified version of it, um, it will actually be able to run full apps. And I believe that Netflix would probably be one of those apps. Um, obviously, there's a Netflix app for the iPhone and iPod Touch, as well as the iPad, or at least coming soon. Um, so I wouldn't be surprised if they go ahead and get it for the ITV, and that goes the same for quite a few other really popular apps such as Hulu Plus, etc., etc. So I think, yeah, as far as getting separate co content like Netflix, etc., I think it would be pretty good. Um, well, the, is the Core i7 a good CPU? Uh, yes, the Intel Core i7 CPU, um, of course this is pretty uh, unrelated to the I Apple TV, but yes, the Core i7 is a fantastic processor. Pretty much any way you go, it's a lot of power. Um, actually, my laptop has a Core i3, and honestly, I can video edit and everything just fine on that. But of course, I've seen a lot of people, and I've tested the Core i7, and it is a very fast chip. So if you're thinking about getting a processor, for your uh, custom computer or anything like that, that's definitely not, you know, there, you won't have any problems as far as power goes. Um, how much money will the ITV be? Most likely, we've heard $100. Personally, I think that might be just a little bit low, especially for an Apple product. It's not like Apple to really go a really, really low price. Um, I wouldn't really be surprised if it goes for more than two, uh, more like $200, maybe $150. Um, and, of course, if it does have different versions, so maybe like it's, it has a 32 gigabyte version or something like that, then that would probably add a little bit more into the price. But I'd probably uh, aim for somewhere in the $100 to $150 range would probably be what it costs. Um, it won't do 1080p videos, is this true? Actually, that's a good thing. Yes, we have heard quite a few things that says that it probably will not do, be able to do 1080p video. And that's a pretty big deal. Um, personally, I, th I think it's a little bit overblown. As well, obviously, 1080p video is quite a bit clearer and crisper. Most people don't even know the difference, can't tell the difference between 720 and 1080p. Um, a lot of people can't tell the difference. And I think that if it can do 1080p, that would be great. But if it doesn't, I think it's going to be a problem, but I don't think it's going to be a deal breaker. Uh, Will it have a DVD drive? No, it won't. It is basically going to be an iPhone without a screen. Maybe just a little bit bigger, but honestly, it's going to be very, very small, and there's not going to be any room for a DVD drive, Blu-ray, anything like that, which is a slight problem, but I think for the market that Apple is really targeting, I don't think it will be an issue. Will the Apple TV be able to run standard iPhone apps? Most likely. Um, now, of course, there's a big difference between using, you know, a TV that's across the room and a little, you know, three and a half inch device in your hand. Um, I would be surprised if they're able to maybe port it or do something where a standard Apple, maybe like you can actually run an, an iPhone app off of your current iPhone and just connect it or however they would do that. However, I don't know how, you know, a standard app would work, obviously, if it needed an accelerometer, touchscreen, stuff like that, which obviously it's not like you can just go pick up your TV and, you know, start floating, messing around with it like an iPad or something. Anyway, guys, that's it for this episode of D3 Live. Um, if you enjoyed, feel free to subscribe. I do these every week, Saturday. And so go ahead and just subscribe if you like, and I will always post a video right beforehand so you can actually watch the entire show live. Anyway, guys, thanks for watching.